Hello everyone and welcome to my newest video. This, today I'm going to be trying out some low poly art. I usually don't do low poly, but I figured why not. I only had like an hour to work on it. So let's get started. I wanted to try to go for that low poly style where they just have a cube for the entire base and then work within that cube. And here I'm trying to create a boolean object for the river that'll be going underneath. Just positioning the camera. Turn on cavity and shadows just to get that interesting low poly look. Here I begin to make the rock formation. to go for a Japanese calming aesthetic. house looking thing. I'm not really sure what it's called. I guess it could be used as a torch. I might try that for the next render. And now I don't know if this technically breaks the rules of low poly. But I did use one subdivision surface modifier, but I feel like it's still not crazy uh, complex. Here I begin to start making the bridge. And at first I was trying to create a curve by just adding multiple subdivision cuts. And it just wasn't working out very well for me. Around here I started to realize that the bridge is way too tall. So I tried doing lower subdivision cuts. Then I realized, wait, I could just uh, cut one inch loop into it and then move it up and then bevel it. So that's what I did. Now I'm trying to make it a little bit thinner. Here I'm adding the poles on the side of the, br the bridge. super thin and use that as the handlebars for the uh, poles next to the bridge. I didn't 
want the uh, entire block to be seen in the camera view, so I just extended it out, and now I'm making a tree. Now I'm going to be using a texturing method I learned from a YouTuber named Infendia. It makes a lot of 10 minute low poly art videos that are really interesting for me to watch. And he textures everything in solid viewport mode by just assigning it this texture um, of like a color palette. And then he scales all the UVs down to zero and then moves um, the UVs over the desired color. I thought it'd be a pretty useful addition in, the, in my model. It's because I'm not trying to um, get something crazy detailed. I'm trying to color the water, but then I notice there's some stretching from the bevel modif or the boolean modifier. So I just um, add some cuts and apply the boolean, and then that fixes that issue. you to go ahead and subscribe if you are enjoying this content. And let me know in the comments uh, what you want more of. I've been doing a lot of RuneScape characters lately, but I feel like, I, I feel like doing some environment art. Here I'm making these poles that come sticking out of the water, and instead of duplicating it, I just use an array modifier to stretch it out across. Here I began attempting to make a rock formation out of a cube, which is surprisingly pretty difficult. I think it probably would have been better if I started from an icosphere of some kind. back at it now, I definitely should have used some kind of sphere because it kind of looks like a mushed up cupcake or something underneath the bridge. Now I'm just going to be adding more trees to the environment and I also want to stretch out the environment horizontally because I don't want it to be seen in the camera view. And I tried for a while to get um, some kind of rotation going with the array modifier so that I could have like two arrays while one is rotated, but I couldn't figure it out so I just duplicated the first array and rotated it over. Here I'm using the rock generator add-on and I just want to quickly create some uh, stone pathway to the bridge. a raised edge loop over here just by uh, switching to the brush select tool and then create this little planter on the corner just kind of a waste of time because I end up not actually seeing it in the final render and now this is um, another point where I get a little bit lost in low poly I was trying to create a bush and I decided that um, I should start from a sphere, but looking back at it, it looks like some kind of weird frog head, but I don't know if you have any tips on how to make a bush in low poly, it would be helpful. Here I'm cutting a little rim around the edge of the uh, river, because I want it to be more of a stone kind of edge. up a little bit and just adding some more trees for some leaves to hang off of. Tried adding a dirt path here but I end up not going with it and just cutting a new line. 
so it looks more organic. And then pushing it down. Here I wanted to try to add some rocks in the foreground. So I had to edit the camera view and just make that one rock a little bit bigger. Now I'm adding more bushes because I don't want to be able to see under the bridge. And I'm trying to shade the bushes so that they're slightly darker as they go more underneath the bridge. And here I'm just adding a slight bank to the river on the other side. Making some edge loops to bring the water level down. I wanted to add some little blades of grass to also go in the foreground. And I was going to duplicate them, but then I realized it'd probably be easier to just make it a particle system on a cube that's underneath the camera. Messing with the rotation, scale, randomness, air length. And always remember to set your origin point of your object for a particle modifier to the base of the object. Because right now it's cutting through the grass, but I'll fix it later. I just changing the origin point, and right there. So now I scale it to be bigger, give it a little bit less so it's not so crowded. rotation and then enable the advanced tab and just enable phase rotation and a quick EV render shows me that I still have the cube showing that I used to boolean cut the plane the original cube so I go ahead and delete that and now I want to uh, create a sort of leaf pattern and this is also somewhere that I was a little bit confused because um, on the one hand I kind of look like I've made a star but after a, a little bit of messing with it, it looks a little bit better but I do want to try this again and get some slightly better looking low poly leaves and I was also starting to notice that the trees were going to go through the bridge so I had to like and rotate them. Looking back on it, I probably should have just moved the trees instead of trying to make the trees bend like that. Anyways, I start duplicating the leaves and I give some in the background so that there you don't see too much of the blank void of space out, outside. And now here I'm trying to open up Blender 2.9 because I want to use the sky texture because I really love that sky texture in Cycles. You can rotate the sun. That's what I'm doing here. You can add this air uh, bar and it essentially just makes the scene look more dusk or sunset time. Here is me rendering it out. I start to notice some little white spots, and I realize I forgot to turn on the denoise, denoising node. Enabling it, Crash Blender, enable it again, adding that denoise node, and then just re, re render it. And that was the end of this. I only spent an hour doing this because I originally planned on making a huge scene from this art that I saw on ArtStation, and for some reason I forgot to ask if I should actually, if I could use it. 
and I just got the answer two days in that I couldn't. So I wanted to make something quick and something fun. So always ask the original artist if you can use it, or even use it as a reference. And if you enjoyed this, please support me by liking the video, subscribing, and if you want you can support me on Patreon. And here's the link for more videos on my channel. Thank you for watching. See you later.